kung konti ang witness na nagsasabi ng totoo dito, eh, ang hirap na rin maniwala dito. Eh. Sana hindi nyo lagyan ng bahid ng kung anong bagas nyo <laughs> sa o marites nyo <laughs> na hindi naman totoo, no? wala naman basihan. Sino pa ba ang next natin makikita ang manloloko? Sabi nga ni Attorney Mark, walang forever. Dahil po yun sa meron mga manloloko. Ay! hindi niya nasagot. O oh, sige, sabi ni Ms. Karen, what is the most serious violation? Sabi niya, ay hindi pa natin masasagot yan kasi maghihiring pa kami. Ayun eh, naman pala, eh, maghihiring pa lang kayo, pero sure na sure ka na na matatanggalan sila ng prangkisa. Senator Robin Padilla kumontra sa panukala ni Huntiveros. Bakit kaya? Congresswoman Migs Nugrales, isa di umanong traidor. Totoo kaya? Tinutula ni Sen. Robin Padilla ang panukala ni Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Tiberos na imbestigahan ang mga umanoy kaso ng pang-abuso sa religious group na Kingdom of Jesus Christ o KJC ni Pastor Apollo Quiboloy. Sa inihaing resolusyon ni Huntiveros, gusto niyang siya sa atin ng Senado ang mga reklamong nangyayari umano sa KGC Wanted si Kuboloy ng Federal Bureau of Investigation sa Amerika para sa patong-patong na reklamo. Sabi ni Padilla, hindi daw dapat yan ang maging basihan ng inhirit sa Senate investigation pero sa resolusyon ni Huntiveros, binanggit niya na may mga humingi ng tulong sa kanyang opisina at diteraw sila sa Pilipinas mismo na biktima. Ma, sabi ni Padilla, dapat siya sa atin ng maigi ang mga ipipresentang witness. Kung kayo ang tatanungin mga kababaya, tama ba ang ginawa ni Sen. Robin Padilla? Pago pa inilabas ang schedule ng investigasyon, nauna nang nagpayag ng suporta dyan. Si Senate Minority Leader Coco Pimentel, sinagot din ni Pimentel ang buwelta ng abogado ni Pastor Kibuloy na si Atty. Ferdinand Topacio. Napamumulitika o panggigipit lang sa pastor ang mga aligasyon sa kanya. Samantala, matapos ngang magbidabida, magmagaling at mag-attitude sa SMNI hearing, PBA Party List Representative Migs Nograles, tila nga na karma, ipinahiya nga daw ng journalist na si Karin Dabila sa one-on-one interview nga ni Nograles ay tila hindi masyadong nakasagot at tila hindi na defend ni Nograles ang kanyang anti-SMNI stand at kitang-kita sa kanyang muka ang napaka-awkward ng ngiti dahil nga hindi nalusuta ni Nugrales ang mga katanunga ni Miss Karen Dabila kaya't ang ending pinagtawanan si Nugrales tinawag pang mga chismosa ni Congressman Nugrales mga kababayan ang kanyang mga bashers sabi pa nitong si Nugrales na wag daw kayong gumagawa ng kwento tungkol sa kanya gusto lang naman daw niyang suspindihin ang SMNI na kung saan doon siya nagtatrabaho dati Dahil di umano, mayroon daw siyang mga violation na nasilip sa medyang ito na kalaunan sa interview niya kay Karen Dabila na kung saan siya ay natusta at inamin na rin naman niyang ang mga violation na ito ay hindi pa napapatunayan at pawang mga aligasyon pala at pinagalitan pa po niya ang abogado ng SMNI na tinawag siyang maganda at panawagan niya sa mga taong bayan na wag na kayong magpapalawko, wag na kayo ulit magpapabudol sa bayan ng Pilipino. Kayong mga bashers ni Mix Nugrales, umaamin ba kayo na kayo ay chismosa at totoo ba na kayong mga bashers ni Mix Nugrales ay gumagawa lang ng kwento para siraan siya? Isulat ang inyong reaksyon at komento. Samantala, matapos na ma-refer sa House Committee and Legislative Franchises, inaasahang sisimula ng deliberasyon ng komite kaugnay ng panukalang inihain upang mapawalang bisa ang prangkisa ng Suara Saub Media Corporation o kilala sa tawag na Sunshine Media Network International o SMNI. Bunsod ito ng umanoy sari-saring paglabag sa probisyon ng prangkisa nito ayon sa chairperson ng komite na si Paranaque Representative Gas Tambunting iimbitahan nila sa pagdinig si Apollo Kibuloy na minsay naging may-ari ng broadcast station inaasahang uumpisa na sa January 2024 ang pagdinig ng panel sa House Bill No. 97-10 na nais ipawalang bisa ang Republic Act No. 11-422 o ang prangkisang ipinagkalawob sa swarasog noong 2019 si One Rider Party List Representative Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez ang naghain ng panukalang batas, unang inibatahan si Kibuloy sa pagdinig ng komite. 
kaugnay ng House Resolution 1499 na humihikayat sa National Telecommunications Commission o NTC na suspindihin ang operasyon ng SMNI. Subalit, hindi dumalo si Kibuloy dahil hindi na umano siya opisyal ng network. Nagugat ang mga pag-iimbestiga ng Kongreso sa prangkisa ng SMNI sa hindi kumpirmadong impormasyon ng isa sa mga program host nito na si Jeffrey K. Eric Celis patungkol sa foreign travel expenses ni Speaker Martin Romualdez na nindiga naman ang legal counsel ng SMNI na walang ginagawang paglabag ang estasyon sa probisyon ng prangkisa nito. May pagkukulang yung explanation ni Congresswoman. Hey, magkiklaim ka national security. O sige, patunayan mo. Kasi kung hindi nyo papatunayan, kung hindi nyo bibigyan ng due process si Ka Eric, eh this is oppressive at mali. And so, hindi tayo nagugulat kung bakit ni-release na sila. O sige, para to save face humanitarian grounds. Okay, sige na nga. Chance. ba? Diba? So... Okay, so yun yung ano, yun yung, ang problema din, o oh, sige, after that, after that, ang sabi, ang napag-usapan naman ay, bakit ba, ba ano, babawiin ang prangkisa ng SMNI? ba diba? Ano ang violation? Sagot ng sagot si Congresswoman Migs, may nakikita talaga kaming violation kung kaya't na, 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 ano, ma, uh, mag, mag-i-issue daw sila ng resolution or Ma- matatanggalan sila ng prangkisa dahil nga sabi, sabi ni Miss Karen, teka muna ang nag-renew ng prangkisa ng SMNI ay yung mga kapatid mo yeah? na, na, ang nag-file ng bill for the renewal of SMNI's franchise was one of her brothers so, o oh, sige, sabi ni Congress 1, ay huwag na natin ano yan, kasi di ako makakomento sa 18th Congress, nasa 19th Congress ako, so may violations O oh, sige, sabi ni Ms. Karen, what is the most serious violation? Ay, hindi niya nasagot. Sabi niya, ay hindi pa natin masasagot yan kasi maghihiring pa kami. Ayun eh, naman pala, eh, maghihiring pa lang kayo. Pero sure na sure ka na na matatanggalan sila ng prangkisa. Sabi niya, hindi anyway, yung resolution namin ay na para sa NTC, manawagan sa NTC na suspindihin muna ang license nila. So wait! I, you are already talking about revocation of franchise, pero aminado kayo na maghihiring pa. Kasi nga, di ba, nire-require ng ating saligang batas na kailangan may due process. So yes, of course, there's going to be a hearing. Pero wag mo na kayong gumawa ng conclusion na may violations dito. Kasi hindi nyo nga ma-identify yung violation. And at the same time, sinasabi mo maghihiring pa lang. So nakikita natin na Alam nyo, kung hindi nakaupo si Congresswoman Nograles doon sa Committee on Franchises, okay lang, forgive, chance. But she is sitting there and she is casting a vote. At yung vote na, at alam natin dito na there is no more objectivity. Ngayon, is that a violation of any law? No, it's not. Because you cannot question the vote she's going to cast, di ba? Ang problema lang is, Ganito yung kalidad ng ating mga kongresista. It doesn't violate a law, but my goodness. This is what you're doing. You go to Congress, you want to take somebody's franchise away, pero hindi mo ma-explain kung bakit. Ang nasa malinaw lang sa isip ninyo ay gusto ninyong tanggalan, pero wala kayong mabigay na dahilan. Or sinasabi ninyo, maghihiring pa po kasi kami. And what is the point of the hearing when you think that they're already guilty? Diba? Bakit ito? Maghiring-hiringan na lang tayo. Diba? Tulip. Okay, matagal na ko na. Ilang ulit ko na siguro may isang dosen ng beses na ako nagsagot ng tatang na ito. Ngayon, may nakahain na petition. Pero sasagutin ko pa rin. <laughs> may nakahain na petition sa ating Korte Suprema. Ito ay habeas corpus filed on behalf of Doc Lorraine and Ka Eric. Okay. Ang habeas corpus is... You know, uh, the petitioners, uh, Dr. Claren and Gaeri, are asking the court to issue an order para iharap sila sa hukuman. Habeas corpus means have the body. Let me have the body or produce the body. Produce the people. Kasi this is actually a writ against disappearances. 
Yung hindi ka biglang itago ng estado o ng gobyerno. Hindi ka basta ikulong, wala kang charges, walang record anywhere. Di mo alam kung nasan yung kamag-anak mo, di mo alam. Uh, hindi alam ng outside world na ikaw ay dinisappear na. So that is the great wit against disappearances, state-sponsored disappearances. Estado ang gumawa. Um, so dadali niyan. Kung sino man yung may hawak sa kanya, ma-identify ma yan sa petition, mag-i-issue na yan ng order. The first writ of habeas corpus that is issued by the court is temporary. Dadalin yung tao sa harap ng hukuman. Tatanungin yung mga, ano, yung, yung mga police or whoever is holding them for detention, uh, yung mga officers, at tatanungin, teka muna, by what right do you have to hold this person? Ngayon, kung ang tao na yon ay dumaan na sa preliminary investigation o kaya uh, caught in the act siya, nahuli siya, hinarap siya sa piskal, may probable cause, kinulong. Kung siya ay na-charge, ipapakita lang ng mga nag-hold sa kanya, eto po, oh, dumaan na po ito sa piskal niya, may probable cause, eto po ang desisyon ng, ng assistant city prosecutor. Kasabihin ng hukuman, okay, legit ito. So, sasabihin niya sa petitioner, okay, petitioner, ayan, nakita mo na yung kamag-anak, no? Hinuhold siya sa ganito, pero may legal right ang government na hawakan yung tao na yon That is habeas corpus. But, let's say, sabihin ng tao, hindi, dinitain namin yan under the Anti-Terrorism Act. Sa Anti-Terrorism Act, hindi kailangan na, na kaagad namin i-produce. We have so many days, 14 days, pwede pang i-extend yan. Pero ni-report naman namin dun sa RTC. So ito produce nila ngayon. Ito po yung report namin. Ito yung kopya ng report namin. At duly noted yan po ng RTC. Okay. On the other hand, there are instances na mali yung charge o yung pagka-charge ay illegal. O yun, sasabihin ng court. Ay, illegal yung charge niya. Napakawalan niya yan. The second bit will be the permanent one. Okay. Huwag niyong i-disappear yan. So, yun po yun. Ngayon, nakita na yung dalawa. They are no longer detained. Hindi na ngayon makikwestiyon ni Attorney Harry, by what right? Ikayo, Congress. Anong karapatan ninyong hawakan itong dalawang ito? Ang tingin namin dyan, hindi legal kasi ito yung Sotolo, ito yung, uh, yung, yung Lincoln Ong ruling, and so on. Di ba? So, sasabihin ng court, ay, moot and academic na ito. Ibig sabihin, eh, ba bakit pa kami gagawa ng desisyon? Ay, nakakawala na yung dalawa. So, there are, there is one instance kung kailan pwedeng ituloy yung kaso. Ang ifa-file ni Atty. Harry dyan ay petition na ituloy yung kaso or ano, motion na ituloy yung kaso kasi the situation is, ito yung kailangan niyang i-prove. Capable of repetition yet evading review. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito, sasabihin ni, at ang kailangan patunayan ni, ni Atty. Ni Harry is, itong sitwasyon na to, oo nakakawala sila. Pero posibleng mangyari uli. Kasi nakita naman natin, itong mga, ito ay, no, they determined to detain these people. Or they determined to punish these people. And so, mauulit na, lang, na naman to. Tapos, pag tumakbo na naman kami sa hukuman, papakawala nila para hindi sila liable. So, capable of repetition yet evading review. So, kung i-file ni Atty. Harry yung motion na yun, maaaring ituloy yung kaso. However, ang nakikita ko dyan ay malamang dahil wala pang due course. Ibig sabihin, pagka nag-file ka ng petition, sasabihin ng court, Teka, hindi pa ito kaso. Hindi pa namin tinatanggap ang kaso papakomento muna kami doon sa kabila. So, pag nakita niya yung komento, ah, walang kwentang kaso. We're not giving this due course, this is dismissed. Okay? So, ngayon, dito sa kasong ito, wala pa yung due course, di pa tinatanggap ng hukuman yung kaso. So, ang gagawin ni Atty. Harry, file siya ng motion na ituloy yung kaso because this situation is capable of repetition yet evading review. Mr. Chair, klaro ko lang Thank po. Thank you, Rona. No, um, sanabi po kasi ni Attorney Suplico na they're being called here for, you know, the, this, ano, yung mga red tagging. Oh. Sa agenda A. Sa agenda B tayo, we're talking about the resolution here. Yes. To clarify lang po. 
and which you are still also the lawyers for you know, SMNI on this resolution, which is simply to urge NTC to suspend because of violations of your franchise, correct, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. So, iklaro po natin, let's not mislead right now what's happening. Hindi naman po ako yung nag-file nun. Pinag-uusapan natin ang resolution na final ko to urge NTC to suspend if we find na violations. Okay. And in any case, since they did not do their due diligence as lawyers, um, there is section 114 of their vice corporation code. And nandito naman din yung SEC na I can ask them questions if you cannot answer the questions of a major stockholder. SEC. Yes, yes, right. oh, so, um, are you addressing this now? Um, wait, wait, Attorney Tolentino. I am. Pwede bang taposin po natin si Congressman Nogdales? Di po kayo pwede pumasok. Okay. Okay. Sarai po kasi you, siyang until, Congress, because you know, kanina nagsasalta, puro hindi nyo alam. Ngayon naman na bibigyan niya, ibabanda niyo siya iba, tatanungin niyo at papasok ulit kayo. Pwede bang taposin muna ni Congressman Nograle? Congresswoman Nograle, yung line of questioning po Sorry for that, Mr. Bago ko kayo pagbigyan, ha? So, yes, Honorable Nograle, para ho maging orderly yung proceeding at saka maintindihan ho natin yung issues. Honorable Nograle. So, Section 114 of the Revised Corporation Code, which embodies the rules for corporation soul since gusto naman po nila tayong turuan tungkol sa corporation soul explicitly requires that at least two-thirds of the membership will give its written consent or has voted to incorporate at a duly convened meeting of the body. SEC, tama po ba, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, SEC, please answer the question. That is correct, Mr. Chair. And even um, jurisprudence, Iglesia Evangelista versus Bishop Lazaro, GR number 184088, July 6, dated July 6, 2010, states, even an amendment as well requires two-thirds of its membership, the vote or the written consent of its membership that convenes for that sole purpose. SEC. Correct? That, that's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Dito po, makikita natin sa pag-file pa lang nila ng Certificate of Amendment of Articles. That's why I highlighted it. It says two-thirds of the members of the corporation, which is not membership and violative of Section 114. Is this correct, uh, as, uh, Mr. Chair, to SEC? That appears to be the case, Mr. Chair. Yes. But, but of course, alam naman po natin, mandatory, I mean, May, may mga submissions in ang documents and you have to, SEC has to, um, uh, if nagbigay sila ng documents, kailangan naman pong, uh, di ba, uh, i-approve. Yes. Right? So, can we show na lang the next slide? Next slide, please. So, they have a trustee certificate which is notarized. No? Sworn. There's an oath there. Sabi naman po na na, contradictory to the first page of the submission, this is attached to the um, 2006 amendment. Meron naman silang two-thirds of the members in a special meeting called for that purpose and jointly held on November 8, 2006. Um, so I, I've been looking through the website. Wala mo po kasing pictures, walang anything. So if SMNI na lang po can furnish us a copy of a photo or proof of the notice Kasi 2006, wala pang, hindi pa pwede yung mga Zoom-Zoom pang ano, board meetings. So dapat, di ba, nakita yan na ah, magkasama-sama sila to, on November 8, specifically, especially for that, that they called a meeting. I'm really hoping SMNI would be able to uh, submit such documents or proof. Because if not, um, hindi po ba to SEC, this is grounds for cancellation because SEC. of fraud. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, any document that uh, appears to be fraudulent or uh, false or contains a uh, false statement uh, submitted in support of a uh, filing of um, Articles of Incorporation or any amendment that constitutes fraud in the procurement and be, may be cancelled, Mr. Chair. So, mukhang kahit yung SEC, binibigan nila ng uh, iba-ibang requirements, I mean, the documents na contradictory to each other. Yes. The first statement on the first page of the GIS and mas malala, if they cannot prove this, Mr. Chair, this is already criminally, this is a criminal offense for perjury because this is under oath. 
The same as the document submitted to us na iba po ang sinabit sa atin sa Kongreso uh, na nalaman po natin today and sa SEC, eh di po uh, fraud po yun. Um, so, to clarify lang po then with SEC, para malaman po natin within the purview of SEC anong definition ng fraud, meron po kasi akong nabasang administrative case uh, number 03-15-173. Um, on Nature's Garden Park versus Enforcement and Investor Protection De Department, where you define fraud within the purview of SEC to be uh, fraud as actual or constructive. And in the same case, you mentioned that any material statement made by an incorporator in its articles of incorporation or amendment that in ter turns out to be falsehood um, would be considered fraudulent. And again... Yung, yung fraudulent na to, regardless of the incorporator's intent or knowledge of such, such falsehood, correct, Mr. Chair? Yes, that's, that's correct, see. Mr. Chair. Correct, Mr. Essentially, Chair. pag mag-good faith na naman na argument, no, that they, they didn't know, they didn't comply, it's still going to fall as fraud within the definition of SEC. Correct? SEC. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Thank and you. fraud... In submission nga, even if they say good faith, is a ground to cancel such amendment or certificate of registration. Correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Proceed. Um, may I ask, and um, with this uh, cancellation, no? uh, may I ask lang, um, NPC naman po, Mr. Chair? Please proceed. Um. For NTC, it is within the power of the NTC to issue certificates of public convenience for operation of communications, of radio and television broadcasting system, correct? Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. And corollary to this power and to your regulatory powers, does NTC also have the power to suspend such certificate, license, or permits? Proceed. If the violations are directly in not uh, are directly in violation of the CPC that the NTC issued, then the NTC may consider may consider your honor. But we take into account also the other jurisprudences on, on, on in, in light of this. Thank so you. Uh, essentially, Mr. Chair, I just want we just want to clarify from NTC. If we see violations now that we're seeing several violations within, especially the franchise of Suarez. So, and even if we dig deeper and see more violations, uh, does, and does NTC have the power to suspend while we're looking into violations at magkakaram kutukan po na lalabas po ang violations? Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Honor, we will, uh, we will be uh, evaluating very carefully the, the, the resolutions and whatever that the, this committee may they come up with too. And we take into account also the existing mandate that we have and the corresponding jur jurisprudence. Yes, Mr. simply Chair. that's why our resolution is to urge NTC. No? So to enlighten lang everyone, I suppose, let's run through na lang po the violations. First, di ba, yung ground naman po ng pag-urge natin sa NTC dahil may violations sa a franchise. Um, claro naman po, kanina pa, that we have next next slide please on their franchise which is RA11422 section 4 um uh, violated not to use the uh, station or facilities for dissemination or of deliberately false information or willful misrepresentation to the detriment of the public interest okay next slide last Meeting, of course, we established this with this whole con shift of the controlling interest, no? Um, and again, this would hit another provision in their franchise, which is on the next slide. Section 10, which we have established that there is no prior approval on the transfer of the controlling interest. And then that's the first sentence of Section 10. The next slide, please. There's also a violation on the requirement to report within 
60 days from the transfer of the controlling interest. Um, so, punta tayo sa mukhang ngayon dahil sa nakita natin no, that the latest GIS statement that they submitted uh, to us is different. Is different. Uh, the one, 2021 po ba yun? 2021 GIS submitted to us on the repertorial requirement is different from the one that they submitted to um, SEC. Mukhang ngayon may violation na rin po sa Section 12. Um, which, if I may direct this committee lang to Section 12 on the repertorial requirements. Um, one, two. On the third paragraph, actually, the second paragraph, the annual report shall include an update on the rollout, development, operation, or expansion of business, audited financial statements, latest general information sheet officially submitted to SEC. So bakit po iba ang sinabit sa atin at iba ang official sinabit po nila sa SEC? Certification of the NTC on the status of its permits and operations and an update on the dispersal of ownership undertaking if applicable. The next, the next paragraph, the repertorial compliance certificate issued by Congress shall be required before an application for permit, certificate, or any equivalent thereof is accepted by the NTC. So ngayon mukhang pumasok na meron na rin pong violation ng Section 12. Hindi pa po tayo tapos. Um, like... We showed earlier, uh, last hearing, next slide please, lalabas ko po ulit na lang yung pie chart, um, that essentially, 53.46% is the executive pastor, Phoebus Holdings is 46.22, eh, Phoebus Holdings naman, about 97% is owned by executive pastor na, di ba, nung 2022 naman, na-establish natin na, Si Pastor po ang talagang may control naman. So equivalently, may 98.37% na share talaga si Executive Pastor. So, but makikita po natin na ang um, cooperative na wala rin po doon sa kanilang franchise na ginawa nila to comply after 29 years of existence ay 0.19 lang po. Ang layo-layo ng 30% um, requirement nila to offer the public um, sa dispersal of ownership clause nila. And they only did this two years ago, after 29 years of existence, Mr. Chair. Diba, sinabi po naman, Mr. Chair, nila that they, were, they are complying and may good faith na naman. Pero questionable na gusto pala nila comply eh 2 years ago lang nila kinumply after 29 years of existence medyo di ba nakaka ano Mr. Chair ah, pagduda di ba but even with that we'll show the next slide so dahil hindi umabot sa 30% meron violation on section 11 okay more than even the franchise nakikita natin tuloy-tuloy yung mga violations nila even with the Constitution. Next slide, please. Because we've established that there's monopoly um, on Article 12. Section 19, the state shall regulate or prohibit monopolies when public interest so requires. No combinations in restraint of trade, of trade or unfair competition shall be allowed. Next slide. Hindi lang isa na violation and the highest law of the land, which is the Constitution, pati rin po ang Section 16, uh, Section 11, Article 16, that Congress shall regulate or prohibit monopolies in commercial mass media. Uh, mukhang tinatamaan na rin po na kailangan natin din tingnan to. Kaya nga, di ba, nakikita natin may mga violations. Not even with the Constitution. Let's also go to the KBP Broadcast Code, which they only withdrew their membership on December 4, 2023. So they cannot now wash their hands and say that all other violations uh, that they did prior to that does not ap apply to them. So next slide. Article 1 of the KBP Broadcast Code on Section 3, Fairness and Objectivity. News reports shall be fair, factual, and objective. Okay, next slide. Meron then on Section 4 on news sources. 
the only news that can be attributed to a source shall be aired. News must be uh, clearly identified. You know, these there are violations here. Na naklaro naman de ba na Mr. Chair correct uh, na umamin naman po na may mga violations at hindi nagcomply at hindi na verify tama po Mr. Chair. Not just Section Four. The next slide. Meron pa pong personal attacks na bawal po na nalabas po naman nila Honorable Manuel and Honorable uh, Castro kanina po. Next slide. Meron din Article 5 naman kung sinasabi nila nagkakamali. Uh, when a mistake has been broadcast, um, it must be acknowledged and rectified as soon as possible. At ngayon nang sila nagsasabi ng sorry dahil nag-iimbestiga po tayo. Parang... Bakit ganun po, di ba? Meron din, Article 13 ng KBP Broadcast Code. So, persons who regularly go on air shall be required to obtain accreditation. Okay, Some of the uh, SMNI hosts were not KBP accredited. Correct, Mr. Chair? Uh, ako nga po, hindi nga po ako KBP accredited. Sinasabi na dati po akong co-host, kaya, kaya nga po umalis. Kasi mukhang may mga violations tayong nakita. So, I can attest to that veracity na some hosts really are not accredited. Okay. And then we have another article sa KBP Broadcast Code, Article 33. The Universal Ethical Standards. Ang dami po kaya sa KBP Broadcast Code. Hindi lang po yun. Uh, Mr. Chair, meron din po sa sarili nating house rules. Para maklaro lang kung bakit, di ba, na site for contempt. Pakita po natin ang next slide. For sure naman, when the Honorable Pimentel and the Honorable Abante moved for uh, to cite uh, the two individuals for contempt, syempre mabigat yun sa loob. Pero trabaho din po natin na kailangan to maintain the integrity of um, this Honorable Committee of Congress ay... Uh, Pag may lumalabag sa batas at may lumalabag sa house rules natin, it is our duty to move for those para hindi tayo niloloko. Ayun naman po din gusto natin, hindi tayo maloko po, di ba? And so, to emphasize that there are violations naman po talaga, which we cited, which the Honorable Congressman cited, which is Section 11C on refusal to answer any relevant inquiry, which today we also heard nga, yun naman, di ba? Yung dahilan kung bakit uh, na-cite in contempt po. And also, acting in a disrespectful manner towards any member of the committee or any misbehavior in the presence of the committee. And then, next slide. Today, now we see maybe there's a violation na rin with SEC that SEC might should start looking into. Because merong hindi pagtutugma-tugma ang kanilang pagbibigay ng dokumento sa pag-apply ng kanilang amendment, that would be detrimental now to their pinangahawa kanilang corporation sold sila. Eh, kung mawalan sila ng certificate niyan, yung amendment to begin with, wala pala. Balik sila sa non-stock. So, mawawala yung argument nila. So, kailangan po ata talagang tingnan nila yan. And tingnan po rin ng SEC. Hindi lang po yung NTC na. No, and to again, uh, the next slide, babalik ko na may violation then sa revised corporation code. So, in the event then that there is that they find fraud in the amendment of AOI of, of uh, the kingdom of Jesus, the executive kingdom of Jesus, no, let's go back to the pie chart. Ano mangyayari? Diba? Pareho pa rin yung numero kasi. Kung magiging non-stock sila, babalik sila sa Kingdom of Jesus na hindi corporation soul at mas malala kasi non-stock sila, 98.37% pa rin. Kasi essentially the 53.46 and the 44.91 ay magiging Kingdom of Jesus na non-stock. And obviously, diba, monopolistic siya, which is violative so many things. So, ngayon, with, uh, meron pa din po, next, na mukhang even the first hearing, we have established that meron ang pending administrative case filed against SMNI for red tagging and misusing uh, of their platform. 
Um, tama po, uh, Mr. Chair sa NTC. Uh, There's a pending. Please um, reply to the inquiry of the Honorable Agrarian. Yes, uh, yes, Your Your Honor, Mr. Chair. There's a pending case on yes. admin case uh, with the Suara Sug with yeah. the NTC. So essentially, that's why we are urging no NTC to suspend muna habang nakikita natin na mukhang niloloko-loko tayo dito. In summary lang, para pakita po natin sa taong bayan ang mga violations that we have seen so far. Not just their franchise on Section 4, Section 10, Section 11, mukhang ngayon pati Section 12. Pati ang highest law of the land, ang constitution natin, dalawang articles. Article 12 and Article 16. Even the KBP broadcast code, there are art, there's Article 1, Article 4, Article 5, Article 9, Article 30, Article 33. Sarili nating house rules din. Kasi hindi nila sinasabi yung totoo. Meron tayong Section 11C and 11E sa house rules natin. At mukhang ngayon, kahit po sa revised corporation code, mukhang ganun. So, we're simply really urging NTC na Mukhang nagkakalokohan dito kasi. May mga fraudulent aspects dito. Um, sino pa ba ang next natin makikita ang manoloko? Sabi nga ni Attorney Mark, walang forever. Dahil po yun sa meron mga manloloko. At kung lolokohin ka, diba, dapat hindi ka nagsistay sa isang toxic situation. So ito na mukhang may panloloko at naloloko tayo kaya nga may house rules. At 'di ba? At mukhang lumalabas pa konti-konti at nagda-dodge sila sa pagsasagot ng mga tanong pag hindi nila masagot, Mr. Chair. Ang nakakatakot ay sino pa ba ang lolokohin kasi nila? Papayag po ba tayo na mandato natin to protect the people from misinformation, to protect people from people who are violating the laws? Papayag po ba tayo? Sana yung NTC, tingnan nyo yung mabuti to, na habang tinitingnan at inuungkat lahat ng mga violations, not just the franchise na makita nyo naman, paunti-unting may nakikita tayong mga violations. Sana po, ay suspindihin nyo muna habang tinitingnan natin lahat to ng mga violations na nangyayari. Yun nang naman po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, can I comment to that, Mr. Chair? There is no question, though, Mr. Chair. But... Wala po siyang uh, hinihinging uh, sagot sa kanyang sinabi. Attorney. But can I make a simple manifestation about uh, hindi about forever or not forever? It's about okay. the... I'll law... give you one minute. Go ahead. It's about corporation soul, Mr. Chair. It's different from religious societies. Under the revised corporation code, corporation code is sec corporation soul is under section 108, 109 up to 113, Mr. Chair. Religious societies is article uh, section 114 of the revised uh, corporation code. Maybe the beautiful congresswoman. Huwag kang bumawi bawi ngayon pagkatapos mo mag-post ng mga kung ano-ano tungkol sa akin na tawagin ako beautiful. Na. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just want one the to one to the Tolentino to have a proper decorum. You should address the chair and you should not point out somebody, members of this committee in your manifestation or else. Mr. I'm still a question with you after this. When it comes to investigation, mamaya yung resolution ng investigation, sasagot ka pa doon. Kaya ayos yung chair, baka agahan mo yan. Sorry for that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, kasi naman, like, Claro naman, di ba? I've not talked about anything personal. No. Let's not use this hearing to hit on personal. Sige, you can post on your page personal things, but let's not talk about this here because I'm not talking about it here naman. Um, and just to rebut na lang po, SEC, that's why I uh, said the case of the Iglesia Evangelista versus... Uh, Bishop Lazaro because that's a case that talked about corporation soul and its amendment and applicable nga 
ang pagpa-file at uh, applicable din sa kanila ang corporation sold ang 114 on religious societies of the two-thirds vote of membership. Correct po, Mr. Chair? Correct, Mr. Chair. So, he cannot say, again, a religious society nakasulat sa Section 114 because I did my due diligence and I studied and came prepared to court today, to court to the hearing today. <laughs> uh, that there is an existing jurisprudence that explicitly already refers that Section 114 on the two-thirds vote of the membership is applicable to amendments of corporations to amend it to become a corporation sold. 